no calculator now. Let R be the region of the first quadrant closed by the graphs of F and G as shown. So not a lot of information, so start writing on the question. But an equation for the line tangent, so I draw my favorite picture, the graph of F at x equal one half. Let's see, they do not give me f of one half. So I'm just going to write f of one half here. Oh, do they tell you though? Oh, over here. Nice to So. I probably would have done the calculation. Yeah, I would have done that too. I would have done what you did, Emily. I didn't even know that. I would have done that. That's all about it. So here's my line tangent. Find F function. 
this is G. This is L. Does anybody need to talk through that again? Please. I just noticed that one because whenever it's an X to an odd number, right? Like that. If you yeah. remember that, that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah, and then the sign is going to totally fine. Yeah, hey, Julia did it by remembering that, you know, you can, sine and cosine always, they're not going to cut through, like, flatten out like that. They would maybe go like this, or, like, this one's just going right through the center. Uh, but you're right, the sine and cosine are not going to flatten out like a cubic function does. So that's a good way to remember, for sure. Bubble paralaxy as well. So area is easy. I write the integral. So area equals. Make sure you use the equal sign on the AP test properly. You lose points. So we want to integrate from zero to x equal one half. We want to take the g function, which is sine of pi f. Subtract the f function. find the area. So I've got to keep going. So I don't have a calculator. So now I've got to solve the integral using antiderivative. This is two things separated by subtraction, so I can do them separately. This is the sine of the ax plus b rule. So Susie's circle tells me that's 1 over, sorry, negative 1 over pi, sine of pi x, minus, the 8 is a constant, Add 1, divide by the same. And all of that gets evaluated between 0 and 1 half. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Question. Please, look at it. So would it, it's not wrong for you to say that those equal each other even though they, they you know? <coughs> Like, do you have to write the antiderivative sign? Because you said this area up there equals the antiderivative. Um, let me see it back to see if I've answered your question. No, I keep talking. Okay. So the area is going to equal the integral. Mm -hmm. Zero to one half of this. You good there? Yeah. Because I don't have a calculator, the way I find the integral is by finding these antiderivatives and then finding how much the antiderivative changes. You good there? So these are equal per the fundamental theorem. But you don't like to have to show that you took the You don't. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to. You can do that just like I did. Does that answer your question, Olivia? Yeah. Two problems. Anybody else? Okay. If you have this right here written on your paper, get this point. Okay? If you have this written on your paper, you can, you've got to have the right notation. You get two more points. Okay? If you had one of these two right, but the other one is wrong, you would get one of the two. <coughs> Question. Okay, now the best part of the AP test is I need to plug in the numbers, but I don't need to do anything else. So, all you should do at this point is write down this equals, let's see, negative 1 over pi, cosine of pi multiplied by 1 half, make sure you have the right number of parentheses, subtract 8, I could have made that 2, I guess, that's pretty easy. So that'd be 2, parentheses, 1 half to the fourth. Uh, minus, I've got to have a parenthesis when I subtract. So this is negative 1 over pi cosine of pi multiplied by 0. Post parenthesis minus 2 times 0 to the fourth. Close parenthesis, you get the last point. You don't need to do anything else. And I wouldn't. Doing more from here is just wasting time, risking an error.
You'll lose the last point. So they reduce it clear to here. You don't have to. If you stop now, you get the full cut. Questions here? Awesome. Next one. Write but do not evaluate an integral expression for the volume when the solid generator is rotated about the horizontal line y equal 1. So y equal 1 is here. Okay, whenever I have volumes of rotation, I have a flashcard that reminds me that I should find my inner and outer radius. So here's the inside radius. Here's the outside right here. Questions to there. I remember that to find volume, I'm always going to integrate cross-sectional area. Because I have rotational volume, the area of my cross section is going to be the area of a circle with a hole cut out of it. So that's going to be pi outside radius squared, subtract pi inside radius squared. Questions to that point? Please, Eric. Would you just always assume it's a circle with a hole out of it unless they completely take over? I wouldn't do that. What I would do is I always start here. Find volume, I've got to find area of the cross section. If they specifically describe that the volume is created by rotation, then yes, it's going to be a hole with a hole cut out of it. Sorry, a circle with a hole cut out of it. For sure. Unless the axis is always in contact with the region, then there may not be a hole in the middle. Super carry. So let's see. Um, so this is my cross-sectional area, so I've got to find the outside radius. So outer radius is always top subtract bottom. So 1 minus out. My inner radius is top subtract bottom, that's 1 minus g. I have to write the integral, I don't have to solve it. So if this is written on your paper, you're done. You give them. So you have the right limits. Okay, if you remember to put pi and zero to one half, you get one point. If everything else is correct, you're gonna get all three points. Please, Jacob. What if I got the limits on the whole problem? I actually went from one instead of one half. But I got the rest of the individual right. So just double check in here. Do you have did you did you pull out the pi or did you get <coughs> the pi on each one? I pulled out the pi. That's fine. So you have exactly one minus f of x squared. Yep. And 1 minus g of x squared, yep. and then all of that times dx. Yep. Then you get two points. Yep. Yep. Anyone else? Please. Well, you know, we'll have to uh, you can leave it in, Alexis. Okay. So if you've got it distributed like this, it says pi and pi. Okay. As long as you have all of that dx, you're fine. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, I think that's it for that one, right? Yeah. Um, 